Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to you out there in Cal Jam Land. This is a pre-Cal Jam podcast with a good friend of mine, Bill Schindler, who's been very supportive of Cal Jam. In fact, I come up to the Hyperbaric booth every uh, lunchtime during Cal Jam to revitalize myself and increase my energy. I'm super excited about this podcast, and we're going to talk about hyperbaric oxygen. Welcome to the show, Bill Schindler. Billy DeMoss, I get a chance to hang out with you for a couple minutes? Well, my more than a couple minutes, better. I hope. Yeah, my day is much better, man. So I hear uh, that you're saving, I hear you're saving lives in California all the time. Yeah, and I'm saving gas and electricity by wearing a coat, too. So I yeah, see that. It's cold yeah. here. I think they're keeping us in perpetual winter here. I think I'm starting to feel like we live in Seattle or something because it never stops raining anymore, which is good. We need the water. I just don't think we need any more snow. All right. I want to read a biblical quote real quick, and I know that's okay with you from Genesis, Genesis 2, 7. Then the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed the breath of life into his nostrils, and the man became a living being. So we know the importance of oxygen in the body, we know we can live with for without food for approximately 40 days. We can live without water for about eight days, but we can only live without oxygen for approximately four minutes. I think we've probably upgraded that. So I think some people have gone upwards of 20 minutes with doing some type of training, but we're not going to get into that right now. We just want to just impress upon everyone the importance of oxygen and the production of ATP and energy and the sustenance of life. What do you got to say about all that, Bill? Well, I say, I tell you what, tell your listeners if they can hold their breath for this whole time that I'm giving this uh, miniature lecture, then they'll understand the importance of oxygen, okay? Right. But and, unfortunately, uh, Billy, what happens is this, is that it's just there, okay? And because it's just there, we don't even think about it. Just kind of right. like we don't think about light, you know, because right. it's just there. But if it's taken away from you, you all of a sudden see the importance of it. And even more so is that what oxygen does when it's under pressure, as far as the healing of it. You know, you brought up a great point there about biblical times. So, and I try, I'm going to refer to this chart a few times during this, this, uh, this little uh, lecture here. You know, you're breathing about 21% oxygen in the Earth's atmosphere, okay? Uh, that's, that's what we're at about right now. Uh, maybe some cities that might be a little bit lower just because of pollutions, et cetera, but about 21%. We take the air that's in our in our room right now, and it goes through a compressor. That compressor has a HEPA filter on it, and it cleans the air out to about 0.01 microns. So the air going into a hyperbaric chamber is as clean as it would be if I was doing surgery in a surgical room. And then we also use like an oxygen concentrator that can bring the oxygen levels up to about 95%. But here's the interesting thing, going back to the Bible portion. They've gone back to biblical times and try to figure out, you know, what was the oxygen concentration like back at that time? And they found the oxygen concentration was about 35%. That's twice as much as what we're living at now. So we have a hard time buying into the Bible about somebody living to be two or 300 years old or 900 years old. It's not, it's not, uh, the, you know, it's the truth, okay? Because not only did they have a higher oxygenation concentration, before the floods of Noah, there was a canopy of pressure that surrounded the earth. So that is kind of what we're doing in hyperbaric chamber. We're taking you back in time, like the way the earth was meant to be, okay? To prove it even more so, if you go back to the dinosaur times, and you look at like La Brea Tar Pits, you're from California, go up to La Brea Tar Pits up in Los Angeles. They start pulling those reptiles out and look at the fossils, right? And the interesting thing, these, these animals were huge, the biggest buildings in some cases. But what happened? The lungs or the rib cages were very small. That tells me the lungs were small. They didn't need as much, okay? So really the essence of life is oxygen. But again, just because it's there, we kind of forget about it. So what I'd like to try to do for your listeners today is just kind of take you through uh, the simplicity of hyperbaric medicine. Sometimes we complicate things so much that we lose the information that we're really sending the message to. Yeah, and I um, want to keep it simple. I mean, I, I don't want to come across as like we're treating anything. We're just trying to get the body back to where it should be. 
And one of the things I was going to ask you, and you already expounded on it pretty well, but it was the pre-industrial revolution, I think, what had a lot to do with a decrease in the percentage of oxygen in our air because of the fact that we've deforestated the planet and plants are what give us our oxygen. And if we have half the plants on the planet, uh, yeah, we're not having as much oxygen being produced. Is there reality to that? Absolutely. I okay. mean, think about it. You know, we need the cemeteries because the cemeteries have grass, okay, and trees, right? So going to Los Angeles, all you see is concrete in your guys' right. jungle out there, right? Right. So uh, you're right. Our parks, our recreation areas, you know, yeah, we need all that stuff. We need the mountains of California. We need the mountains of Dakotas and all that area. Stop tearing down all that stuff, you know? Well, we need to plant more trees, right? And, Absolutely. Uh, so. Yeah, replenish the soil. There's a lot of things that we need to do. And this whole thing with global warming and carbon carbon issues is the fact that uh, if we want to get rid of carbon dioxide, we just need to plant some more plants to convert that carbon dioxide and oxygen. That's simple. We don't need to go into full lockdown, which I've kind of exactly. mentioned. Exactly. That's the next scam that we're going to go through. You heard it here first, maybe not here first, but I think the next lockdowns are going to be uh, global or climate engineering uh, lockdowns to prevent us from spewing fossil fuels into the air. And I'm not saying I believe in global warming. I just think there's probably better ways to handle the situations we got on the planet. Let me ask you a question right up front, because I get this all the time. And then we'll talk about uh, what applications and what conditions would be best benefited. But everybody always wants to know soft shell versus hard shell and I know that in the soft shell, which I have here, it's 1.3 atmospheres, which is equivalent to going down like, what was it, 13 feet into in seawater and the pressure that you would get from that? Right. That's a good question. But you know what? We can't talk about anything first, Billy, until we, 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 we kind of bring a, a subject matter up before we even talk about soft and hard shell. Okay. Okay. Because Perfect. a lot of your listeners are probably going to go, well, if this was such a good thing, as they, as they learned today. Uh, my doctor would have told me about this, right? right? I mean, uh, my doctor's a neurologist, you know, he's a top surgeon. My dad had a stroke. He would have told us to use a hyperbaric chamber if oxygen to the brain would help there, but he didn't. Okay. So we have to go, we have to understand a little bit of the history of hyperbaric medicine so that it makes sense why we don't know about it. And then we can talk about the difference between soft and hard shell. Okay. Okay. Perfect. All right, makes sense. Yeah. All You're right. So, teacher at this than I, and it, how long have you been into hyperbaric oxygen? I know you've been into it for a while. Yeah, I started one of the first clinics in the United States 23 years ago, and uh, with the portable chambers. And I've treated in my own clinic over 60,000 families, and I speak and lecture on hyperbaric medicine all over the country. Matter of fact, I just got done doing a podcast all throughout Europe uh, two days ago, and. And then and conferences and stuff there. So my gift is that, uh, or the, what I've been blessed with is not so much the knowledge. I've been blessed with how to keep things simple that we can all understand it. And uh, uh, that's, you know, at the end of the day, you know, I've got new patients coming in. They, if they walk out, they don't understand something because I just threw them in the chamber and said goodbye. Then they're not going to tell their, their brother or sister, hey, man, I just went to the cyberbaric chamber because my knee was bothering me. But this guy just told me that cancer can't survive in oxygen. And you know, mom's got cancer. Why haven't we taken her over to the hyperbaric chamber? Or, you know, that maybe they come in because they had some sleeping issues, or maybe they had a child with autism. And then all of a sudden they find out, hey, man, I didn't know hyperbarics could help with Lyme disease and all these other conditions. So really, it's all about educating our people. And that's why I love you, Billy. And one of the reasons I love you, because you're about explaining things and educating people because when you educate somebody you give them the power to make a decision that's best for them not for me i already know what it does i right. already know what we're going to do with hyperbrics okay so let's backtrack for a second a lot of times when somebody comes to my clinic the first thing i ask them is i say how long do you think hyperbrics been around and what do you think they say billy i have no idea what they say but what would you say if you didn't know I would say, well, I know the answer to that. It's been around a long time, but I would, I would say, say about 20 years. Okay, 20 years. Okay, but keep 20 that in mind. Okay. you've been into it for 23. Okay, all right. So, but keep that in mind, okay? Because it's important, okay? And then, do you think it's alternative or traditional medicine? I think it's alternative. 
Okay, so we got alternative in about 20, 30 years, okay? Well, let's put some facts out there. Let's let's get rid of the myths that the medical community wants us to always understand. So this is one of my textbooks, okay, that I first looked at years ago, all right? And I'm not the sharpest knife in the drawer. There's a lot Neither of- Neither am I. But I'm not the dullest one, though, either. People. Yeah, the stupider I am, the better and easier it gets, man, okay? All right, so- so all this very critical, tons of information, lots of big words, all that stuff, you know? I have to have the dictionary to look up every other word, okay? So I'm not sure not in a drawer. So what I did was I went straight to the table of contents. So what is this book about? Matter of fact, the book was actually this book, but I've done this demonstration many times. The book's falling apart on me, <laughs> okay? So that's why I'm using the bluer one, all right? Now... If you go to the table of contents, it's broken down to three sections. One section is about the science behind hyperbaric medicine. How does it work? What's the function behind it, et cetera? The second area is clinical applications. And the third area is references. The very first chapter says this, the history of hyperbaric medicine. That caught my attention 23 years ago. So I went to that first chapter and this is what I saw. For your, for your people that can see this there. See this little barrel right here? Yep. With this drawing in there? Yep. That dates back to 4500 BC, before wow. Christ. Okay? That kind of blew me away, Billy. And so what happened was this chapter kind of took me on a, on a, on a, on a, a tour, okay, of back in the 16th century. They took me through some more pages and said, hey, wait a second, Cunningham in 1920, 1930, he had this big, huge, uh, uh, it was like a dome that where people walked into a pressurized room, so to speak. And that dome was, uh, uh, they were using for the Spanish flu and influenza was saving people's lives, okay? And then we look into more modern stuff there and still into the 17th century, it almost looks like, like what you got in your office here, except it was like an accordion box that went into that. So my point of all this is this, this is not new medicine. Matter of fact, if you were to name the top 10 treatments in medical history from the beginning of time to today, hyperbaric medicine would probably be in the top five. But here's the problem. There's always, you know, there's always gotta be a problem. There's with always the caveat. There's always, they always want to screw us, don't they Billy? You know, yeah. here's something good. Let's make it so you can't have it, okay? So what they did was they said, listen, we in our hospitals back in the 1930s, when they created the American Medical Association, uh, you know, the Rockefellers, Carnegie's and all those kind of people, and they decided who could have it and who couldn't have it. So what they said was, we're going to treat 13 conditions in our hospital. That's it. So if you have their condition, you could come in and use it, but you had to be a burn victim, 70% of your body. You had to have carbon monoxide poisoning, a flesh-eating bacteria wound, divers with the bends. If you had a child on the spectrum of autism, dad had a stroke, mom's got cancer or arthritis and Lyme disease, everything else, they didn't say it doesn't work. What they said was the insurance isn't going to pay for it. Wow. So what they did was they blackballed all of us. All right. So they made it so that we couldn't have access to it, even though they knew that it could help so many conditions. And why do I say that for a fact? Because in their same book, they say they treat 13 conditions. And remember, you you and I, Billy, we aren't the smartest people. You tell us that you treat 13 conditions. They see we go to our head and we go, well, you must have 13 chapters in your book because that's how we think. But they lied again, Billy, because you look into their own textbook, right? And they're not really lying. But they're just not divulging all the information because you see, and you go back to the charts there, there's another 40 chapters in the book. Okay, decompression embolism, uh, et cetera. But you flip the page and you're going to see stuff like hyperbaric medicine and plastic surgery, dermatology, hyperbaric medicine and neurological disorders, hyperbaric medicine and MS, hyperbaric medicine and aut the list goes on and on and on and on. So that's when was the problem. That book, when was that book written, Bill? Uh, this one here was well, the one, this was the third, edi fourth edition. And this was like in 19, the late 90s, yeah, in the 90s. And this was the fourth edition, okay? Wow. But here's my point about all this, is that it doesn't matter how good something is. If you can't have access to it, you know, we, we talk about color as, you know, prejudice, right? Listen, prejudice has nothing to do with black and white, uh, brown, uh, skinny, tall, fat, no. Prejudice is about money. And right. prejudice is about 
who has something and who doesn't, okay? So it doesn't matter if you had all the money in the world, you can't go in the hospital to use a hyperbaric chamber, all right? So let me give you an example. Every 37 seconds in America, somebody's having a stroke or a heart attack. Every 37 seconds. So if the insurance companies had to treat all stroke patients with hyperbarics, which makes complete sense, because what is it? What is a stroke? It's a lack of what? Oxygen to the brain. Oh my gosh, we can get oxygen to the brain. Then maybe we could bring somebody's life back to Yes, we could. It's it's not that complicated. Lack of oxygen to the brain. Seven words. If, if I took an eight year old kid and brought him up on stage to speak with me, and I ask him the question, "What a stroke is?" And I tell him, you know, Grandpa can't walk, he can't talk, he's got, you know, he's paralyzed, whatever. And then I say, it's a lack of oxygen in the brain. What do you think an eight-year-old kid would say to me? He would go like this, because I've done it many times. Duh, Mr. Bill, I'd get oxygen to his brain. Well, he's right. So you're telling me it knows more than the doctors I work with every day. Yes, because we've kind of forgotten. If the grass is green over here and you water the grass and it's brown over here and you don't water the grass, you don't need USC to come to your house and dial, you know, analyze your soil. Water your grass, okay? Right. Water it, okay? Right. So the, the sad part is that the reality is it's not, it, medicine's not complicated. We just got to get give the body back what God wanted to have to begin with, okay? So 37 seconds, or a stroke or a heart attack, if the insurance companies had to pay for that, it would bankrupt the insurance companies overnight. That's why. And we're not even talking about autism and Parkinson's and dementia and Lyme disease and arthritis and all the other stuff. So they're never going to change that. That's the right, sad right, part. Right. And it's very sad because we've had so many people in, in our own country and all over the world that could have been helped with this. The number one treatment, for example, for MS patients, multiple cirrhosis in Europe, specifically England, is hyperbaric medicine. Do we do that here in the United States? No. Okay. So let's... Uh, yeah, Let's but they're also it. trying to sell drugs too. I mean, that's the real deal. I mean, and yeah. you know, as we know, drugs don't really fix anything. They just basically You're tally. absolutely right. Right. So again, that's why I bought the chamber for me, is because I'm concerned about the next epidemic, which is not heart disease or cancer. It's going to be Alzheimer's and cognitive decline. And we know that 75% of the oxygen that we breathe goes to our brain. We understand the increased necessity for us to make sure we get plenty of oxygen to the brain. You also Absolutely. mentioned MS. I think most, what most people don't understand, and you understand it, but chiropractic is super important to take tension off the spinal cord, tension off. Absolutely. So chiropractic with hyperbaric and a few other adjuncts, maybe CBD, cannabis stuff, is really there to upregulate the body to function at a higher level to heal itself is basically what we're talking. We're not trying to cover up symptoms. And that's why I love working with you, Billy, and all the chiropractors, because you guys open up pathways. Right. The massage therapist moves blood flow. The, the physical therapist gets range of motion about blood flow. It's all about inflammation. If we can decrease inflammation and get blood flow going on and get to the areas that we need to get to when we're out of alignment and we got issues going on, it's not complicated. Right. It's really not. All right. So I'm just going to go with your listeners and stuff here. Just on a little chart to make things kind of simple. We already did the 21 and 95 percent. So there's a law in physics. It's called there's actually a, a couple of laws, but the major Henry's one's law? called Henry. Whose law? Henry's. No, it's not Henry's law. It's not. No, it was Billy DeMoss's law. No, on, yes. <laughs> All right, we've got to have some fun here, man. You can't always be so serious, right? I'm so never listeners, you know we that. want to show you that the simplicity of, 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 of medicine is not complicated. So Henry said this, very simple. He said, if I take a gas and I put that gas under pressure, that gas will dissolve in liquid. Kind of like if I put some sugar in coffee, what would happen in the sugar? It would dissolve. It would dissolve. If the coffee cup was full and I kept pouring coffee, what would it do? It's it would coffee. overflow. Right. And if I took the coffee and I dumped it into my desk right here, right now in front of me, that coffee would go everywhere. That's what happens in the chamber. If you're going, to, it's a very important statement I'm going to make right now. If you're going to, uh, if you're going to change somebody's biological history, we have to go back to the very beginning of where the problem occurred at the cellular level. 
Our body's made of two kinds of cells, red and white blood cells. It's not complicated. The red blood cells, okay, these guys here, they carry oxygen. The white blood cells, they fight bacteria, virus, infection, and disease. So this red blood cell here, it's got five little dots of oxygen, hypothetically. It's happy. It's healthy. No problem. But the cell below it, or excuse me, the, above that, it only has three dots. That cell has been compromised, oxygen, because you either have a disease, you have some kind of condition, or you had some type of injury or insult. This is what we're able to do. We're able to fill up the red blood cells with oxygen. If I measured your oxygen levels right now, they're about 96, 97%. Right. That doesn't sound like I can do much more, but you're talking about trillions of cells in the human body. When the cells are all full and they can't hold any more oxygen, we're still under hyperbaric conditions. Where does the oxygen go? That's the miracle because now it spills over into your blood plasma. Right. And what happens there is I'm able to push more oxygen and blood flow into all your tissues, all the organs, all the glands, all the bone density, cross the blood brain barrier. I'm able to do all this at one time from head to toe, and especially the parts of the body that are difficult to get to, which is our feet and our fingertips. That's why a diabetic has his toes cut off. It's all because of circulatory issues. Right. So Billy can open up a pathway with what he does chiropractic wise. And we can get blood flow down in that foot. Maybe we don't have to get it cut off. That's an interesting concept. Okay, right? <laughs> right? Not complicated, right? Now. Yeah, and also, I'm a big advocate of the Beamer, which helps open up the microcirculation. Absolutely. Well. Yeah, so we would put that on the feet to open up the microcirculation, use the hyperbaric to get the oxygen saturation. And it's, again, I really didn't realize that in the beginning. I thought it was, a, we were trying to supersaturate the red blood cells, but we're really supersaturating the plasma. The plasma which is the fluid that the red blood cells are in. And I didn't realize that till recently. So I, I really increased. So you've got people that also promote, I think it's, it's is it uh, when they mimic going to higher altitudes to increase your blood cell concentration? What's that therapy called again? CVAC? What are you talking about? Uh, when, you're when you're talking about when they're trying to, they're trying to pre, uh, uh, they try to reverse that issue okay, because when you go to high the altitudes, body. yeah, the, the air. What happens is at higher altitudes, there's less oxygen, so your body reproduces more red blood cells. So right, they try to right. make that, you know, mechanically wise, like with uh, hyperbaric tents, where they take the oxygen out of the tent or make it lower, so your body would re, uh, uh, pressurize more. You probably notice, Billy, when you go to the mam mammoth. Oh, I stuff, do. That you, you know, your energy level is different. But when you come back home, going back down to Newport, that you, you, I mean, you could, you know, run all day long because why? Because your body was forced to produce more red blood cells. Okay. Right. I but know the real issue heart is rate back is to the higher in the mountains. So I know my oh, heart's yeah. working a little harder to get that uh, decreased oxygen to the body. Until you're alchemated. Now, yeah. here's the interesting thing. They did a study with some pigs and they took the red blood cells out of the pigs and the pigs died. But then they took other pigs and took the red blood cells and put them in a hyperbaric chamber and the pigs lived. Right. Amazing. Right. Okay. Because Just they on carry the plasma more alone with no red plasma. blood cells. Right. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's go to the white blood cells. Those are the good guys that are fighting bacteria, virus, infection, and disease. So a couple of key things. When oxygen goes into a cell, it forces toxins out. Oxygen in, toxins out. The more oxygen that's available for the cell, the more the body's ability to detoxify. This is huge. This is why we use hyperbarics in the hospital for carbon monoxide poisoning. We don't get rid of the carbon monoxide quick enough. You die. There is no second chance. Okay. Right. Right. Now, why is that important? It's for some of the reasons that Billy said earlier, when we start working together, not independently and bring our sources together, we can make big things happen. So for example, if you're taking supplements, those supplements now would be immediately dispersed into the bloodstream. They become much more effective and much more efficient. Same thing with pharmaceutical drugs. So if our pharmaceutical drugs are being more effective and efficient, what, what can we do? We can reduce medications and not eliminate them. Okay, give me an example. I had a lady with rheumatoid arthritis so bad that both her hands are closed like claws. She's 70 years old, weighs 85 pounds, and she was eating handfuls of anti-inflammatories and six Vicodin for pain a day. 
That's wow. enough, Billy, to knock out you and me and two other men. No wonder why grandma's face is in the mashed potatoes at Thanksgiving because she's just drugged out, okay? We got her to the clinic. Within about a month or so, she was off all anti-inflammatories. Once we were able to start decreasing- How many days a week was she in the tank? She was going to the chamber every day. Because you know, we, have we have an aggressive thing we're trying to go after. We'll back off later on. But right now, we want to go after it. So you're so, saying five days a week or is that- Five days a week? a week. Okay. So now they end up buying a chamber and having it in their home. Okay. So now she's reducing the inflammation in her, in her hands. So if we reduce the inflammation in her hands, she's not as in much pain. So the, the first indicator was that she said one day, oh, I forgot to take my pain medication this morning. She had gone through the morning and she forgot about it because she wasn't in as much pain. And that led us to decreasing the pain medication. And she got down to taking one Vicodin. That was it. Within three months, the massage therapist was able to help her open up her fingers. She got full use of both hands. Okay. Wow. The work that the chiropractors do and the massage and the, the you know, the Beamer and, and CBD, and when we bring this all together, we're just going back and putting the body back together the way that God intended it. Okay. All right. Let me, uh, let me you just hit something there, the CBD, uh, because one of the benefits of HBOT or uh, HBOT is the fact that it decreases inflammation. And we know that 85% of disease is really caused by an inflammatory state of the body. How does the hyperbaric, and I know I know the answer, but I want you to let our listeners know, how does hyperbaric decrease inflammation? Well, hyper means more and baric means pressure, okay? Right. So we're able to decrease the inflammation by decreased, by increasing that pressure there so that now that all that, you know, like when we do a surgery, we got, we got inflammation, okay? But we're not really necessarily talking about inflammation like sometimes our listeners are thinking. Like, oh, I, I twist my ankle, so it's swollen, okay? Well, we bring blood flow to that area, okay? That helps us reduce that inflammation. We're talking, you and I, Billy, are we really talking about inflammation at the cellular level. Because if we can't get rid of the inflammation at the cellular level, nutrients can't get in, and oxygen can't get in, and then we have cell death. That's just what happens to the brain, okay? Which leads us to the next thing, okay? Mitochondria, all right? Mitochondria. Mitochondria. Huh? I love mitochondria. Oh, I have to learn how to say it right. Mitochondria. You know, you why can't you just fast. say the engine of the cell? You know, it's not that complicated. You got to make a big word so that people can <laughs> don't understand what you're saying. They can't remember the word because you could have just said engine. They get that, but we got to go mitochondria. My wife tells me this all the time. You mispronounce it all the time. I say, I know. It's an engine. That's all I need to know. Okay. It's so the, the powerhouse of the cell. Powerhouse of the cell. So the engine needs some fuel. What do you think the fuel for the mitochondria is? It is oxygen. oxygen. Are you starting to follow the pattern that's going on with everything that we need? So the mitochondria needs oxygen. So if I have more oxygen available for the mitochondria, what it's going to do is going to increase the opportunity for our body to produce more fuel, which would be energy. Okay. Energy. That's what you want. That's what I want. People think you and I have all kinds of energy. No, this is just how we are. But the rest of you out there, you're walking around like zombies. <laughs> okay. You want more energy. Okay. When dad had a stroke or you just had surgery to get up on the knee surgery to get up and go to the bathroom or, some, or go into another room, you, it takes every amount of energy that you got. So you need that. When my stroke patients need to walk, they need endurance. They need energy. They need stamina. That's why all the athletes want to use it. I've got about 400 and some odd chambers in the NFL. Those athletes are using it because they want the edge to have more endurance, energy, and stamina and for recovery, period. Right. It's, not, it's not complicated, okay? Right. It's not complicated. So it allows us to produce more energy. The oxygen, mitochondria, energy, right? right? Now, Billy said something else that we should all know, too. All your bacteria and viruses can't survive in oxygen. Specifically, the big C. Big cancer. cancer. Right. Tell them why, Billy. Because cancer does not like oxygen. Who and said that? Not. What's that? Who says that? Uh, I think that's why we have such a high prevalence of cancer these days, because we have such a low uh, uh, concentration of oxygen oxygen in our air these days. I think that's part of it. Of course, there's a lot of other factors, whether it's carcinogens that people are exposed to or 
negative emotions and lower frequencies. So I'm that's what I'm I'm teaching a longevity workshop next week. And it's all right. about raising your frequency by what you think and how you sleep. And it, again, all of it put together is just going to raise the vibration and the frequency of a person to make it healthier. I mean, I, I don't like to think that I'm treating cancer or treating autism. I'm just raising that frequency so the body can heal itself. Yeah, so. we don't cure anything. I don't cure anything. Yeah. I don't treat anything. I let the body do its work. Yeah. But here, here's something interesting. Billy, you've been practicing for many years. You've helped so many thousands of families with those hands of yours, but not only with your hands, you've also done it with your mouth. You've done it by encouraging people and loving on people and letting people know about Christ. And, and then you taught other doctors. So, you know, we, when we bring the spirituality and we bring the mental part and we bring the physical part together, we can move mountains, okay? But here's something interesting. We gotta go back to our ancestors. We gotta go back to people with wisdom and look at them and say, what did you learn back at that time? You know, one of the biggest problems we have in this in the world today is the young people don't necessarily want to listen to the older people. And the older right. people don't necessarily <laughs> want to listen to the young people. You know, I see the new chiropractors coming out of school and they just want me to sign their documents. I ask them, use your words. Hi, my name is Mr. Bill. What's your name? OK, so but when we bring the students together with the professors and the, and the colleges, we can move mountains. Because the older people need to know how to use these things like a cell phone and social media and stuff. I don't know how to do all that. No, I they don't. They need to hear how I describe how things are on an emotional level, okay? Right. So right. the bottom line is this here. Back in 1930, there was a guy named Odom Orber. And he was a biochemist from Germany. He did all his research on cancer. And this is what he said. We all have cancer cells. You have them. I have them. We all have them. They're going to come out about six or seven times in our lifetime. When the cancer comes out, if your immune system is strong, it will keep it together. But what happens if it was, you just had a death in the family, you just lost your job, you had some emotional stuff going on, you had some other health issues like diabetes or Lyme disease or whatever, the cancer goes, you you were a perfect candidate for me to come hang out with you. And not only am I going to hang out with you, I'm going to grow. So all of a sudden you hear about somebody getting breast cancer or prostate cancer or this cancer or that cancer, and we think, Oh, that poor person. That didn't happen overnight. Matter of fact, by the time a woman gets a mammogram, it's already been there for 10 years. We should be doing thermographies. So we can see Thank you. you uh, a thermography can you know tell us why is this color over here white or red or blue? And then we do a biopsy and find out it's precancerous. Well, now we can do something that's not so aggressive like chemo and radiation. Okay. All right. So Warburg said this: the primary cause of cancer is a lack of oxygen at the cellular level. And the true treatment for cancer is to saturate the human body with oxygen and to avoid further environmental toxins. Give me an example. Do you have Costco in uh, California? Of course we do. Oh, and do you have a meat department in California? A meat department? Yeah, at Costco. Yeah, of course. Yeah, of course you do. And do you have that place where they got those chickens? In the Costco, you know, that a rotisserie chicken? Uh, I don't go there much, so I, I don't know about that part. <clears throat> they got a section with Billy. They got rotisserie chickens, man. They're great, okay? <laughs> they're like they're like bigger than the screen that we're on right now, right? And matter of fact, the breast of the chicken is like the size of a turkey, okay? So if you're a big guy, you want to have a lot of meat, you go to Costco, you get the big, big bad boy chicken in the rotisserie that's got that big chicken breast that's like a turkey. And you eat it. And then you go home and think, has a chicken really got that big of a breast? And you tell your buddy who has got a farm, he says, no, chicken breast is smaller than, your, than the fist of your hand. Well, how do they get it so big? Well, that's all the hormones and all the stuff that you're not supposed to be eating inside the chicken. Wow. That's fact, okay? So the point is, this is why we try to, you know, as much as you can, you try to eat more pure things. You go Whole Foods, Trader Joe's, whatever you guys do in California, you guys are a little nutty anyways. So, okay. The point is, is that uh, what Warburg has said, you know, environmental toxins back in 1930. That's all we talk about today. We never heard the word gluten-free and casein-free. And my kids couldn't eat, you know, couldn't eat bread because it had gluten in it. Today, 
I go to restaurants now and half the, any restaurant I go to, half the menu says GF on it, gluten-free. Right. You got to tell me something gluten-free or dairy-free or whatever, because if I don't, if I eat it and it's not, I'm going to have a reaction. That's sad. That's right. because that's how right. bad our food's gotten. Right. So Warburg said, avoid further environmental toxins. He also said the cancer is fed by sugar and when the body's in an acidic environment. So it's not rocket science. Take sugar away as much as you can. I had coffee this morning. Dunkin' Donuts. I'll show you. You had donuts? I did have it. I'm sorry, Billy. I did a, a big one. Was there any sugar in this? No. I got rid. I stopped doing sugar a couple of years ago. You had ago. a donut, I though. No, I didn't have a donut either. I just. Oh, I coffee. thought you said you had a donut. No, I went to Dunkin' Donuts. Dunkin' <laughs> okay. Donuts. Okay. I'm advertising for Dunkin' Donuts, okay? I make my, my own point, coffee with my own water. That's how weird I that's am. That's even better, okay? With organic but my coffee. point is, I'm not eating any sugar if I don't have to. I'm not putting, I, I try to stay away from it as much as I can. So no sugar, put the body in an alkaline state. I use Kagan water for that, you know? And then I, you know, try to, try to stay away from sugary things, right? And the crazy part about this whole conversation this here is Warburg won two Nobel Prizes, one in physics and one in chemistry. It's the highest honor you can win in medicine. And we took that and we shoved it under a table so nobody knew about it. Many of us today have taken that out and we're using it, hyperbarics for our cancer patients and our cancer patients are surviving and they're, and they're thriving, okay? Uh, you know, uh, most of the cancer patients don't usually end up dying of the cancer. They die of secondary and tertiary issues caused by radiation and chemotherapy, okay? All right. The last thing is the brain. Let me say something on what you just said. I mean, oh, that's I didn't the real screw benefit. Is it's all about why Why does everybody try to treat everything? Why wouldn't we prevent it? To me, I do like CBD. I get adjusted. I eat healthy. I try to get amazing sleep. I think good thoughts. I'm grateful to God. I pray to God every morning. But I mean, what people don't understand is even hyperbarics, one of those things that we could use as just health maintenance Absolutely. And us from getting this stuff. I mean, like you, people all the time go, well, if I, you know, if you take CBD to eradicate cancer or you do hyperbaric to eradicate cancer or, or any other disease for that matter, why wouldn't you just do it as an adjunct to your, your, whatever you're doing as far as your healthy, your healthy lifestyle to contribute to longevity and preventing disease? That's you know, it's, a, it's a great point, Billy. It's, it's wow. actually one of the most important. Ones. You know, I have a chamber in my house, even though I have a clinic with multiple chambers. My wife was in the chamber the other day at five o'clock in the morning. She's 73 years old. And How I old are you now? I'm not telling you. Okay. Come on, man. 105, okay? Tell me what year you're born in. 63. I'm 63, okay? Okay, now, so you're, you're younger than me. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so here's the point. I see a lot of cancer in my clinic. Matter of fact, I'm on the board of directors for children with cancer. And when you're around that kind of stuff, it becomes more in your conscience too. Right. And I want to think about, man, what can I do to try to maybe not get it or, or, or make the odds less, prevent it? I'm fat, ugly, and overweight now. So the reality is I'm not doing the things I was doing when I was 20 years old. And I'm not Billy DeMoss going down the side of a mountain on a snowboard. Right. So is there anything that I can do to try to help me prevent some things? Like go see a chiropractor, to do some CBD, to go get hyperbarics, to go get a massage and move my blood flow, etc. Drink so, clean water. So I'm not saying that I can't food. get, I can't get uh, cancer, but I'm saying I've reduced the odds a lot more. I'll give you an example. If I was in uh, uh, an area that was humid and I took a bucket of water and I filled it up with, with like a Home Depot bucket, and I filled it about halfway, okay? When I fill it up about halfway and I just let it sit outside for two weeks. In a couple of weeks from now, some of it's going to be evaporated. That's no doubt. But more importantly, because it's stagnant, what's going to happen is we're going to start getting algae in there. We're going to start getting a perfect breeding ground for mosquitoes to live and for them to survive. But if I go inside my house and I take a fish pump tank, you know, the pumping the fish tank out, and I go plug it in and put it in that bucket of water, in a short period of time, there is no more mosquitoes and the allergy dissipates. Why? Because I've broken the surface of the water and I brought oxygen into that water. That's the whole concept of a swimming pool. It's not because if you didn't do anything in your swimming pool and just let it stay settled and you just poured chlorine in it, it's not going to kill everything. It's the movement of the water that kills everything. Make sense? So I want to 
I just want to, I don't want to let my body be stagnant as, as my, because I'm not doing the things I did when I was young. I'm not out there running around like a kid all the time. We're trying to save lives, you know, except you, 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 you're amazing. You blow me away when I see well, your I made time for it, man. I have to make time for it. So I Dude, do it. If I, even if I made time, I couldn't do it. <laughs> you're, hey, it isn't about time, Billy. It's about, I can't go down a mountain like that. I'd be scared to death. Okay. Or sir. But I went up on one of those jet things. You know those jet those jet bags? Uh, yeah, yeah, lake? yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I went up. Okay, I looked behind me and I fell down and I ripped every everything in my ankle. I, my wife says you're acting like 16 rather than 61 at the time. Okay, right. All right. right. The last part's the brain. The brain is surrounded by fluid, cerebral spinal fluid, and this is fascinating because of what happens in the brain. Um, so the brain's got you know this fluid around it and this spinal fluid. And then it's got a barrier that surrounds the brain itself called the blood-brain barrier. So based on Billy DeMoss's law, actually Henry's law, I can cross over that blood-brain barrier and deliver oxygen and blood flow to parts of the brain I couldn't get there before. So let's say dad had a stroke and let's say it was the frontal lobe, okay? The brain's pretty smart. It wants to protect the rest of the brain. So it, it puts some scar tissue on that area. So we got all these neurons that are still there. Matter of fact, we produce neurons almost to the day that we die. The myth of like, we only do it to a certain time of our life was a myth. We're, we're, we're re reproducing them, okay? So now all of a sudden, I, I got all these neurons. Some of them are working at 20%. Some of them are working at 30, some 50, some 80, some of them 100%. That's why do, dad can talk and do all these other things. But there's a bunch of them there that are not. And all of a sudden, I bring blood flow, again, blood flow chiropractic, open up pathway, bring blood flow to the brain that was not going there. And now all of a sudden I wake up one of those little cells and it's got a smiley face on it, but he wants to know what his buddy's at. So he reaches over to his buddy, Dan, and he touches Dan. The synopsis is now connect. Two, two neurons connect. Now we got two happy faces and now we got a new pathway we didn't have a minute ago. And then we get another connection, another connection, another connection. And all of a sudden I'm watching a man walk out of a wheelchair. An autistic child say its first word and all the things that I get to see in God's world every day in my clinic. You know, the people help us tell the stories, uh, Billy. I mean, there's not a week that goes by in my clinic. I don't have tears pouring down my eyes because right, I right, see right, right. with my own eyes, a man walk out of a wheelchair, a child saying its first word, a cancer patient live and not die, not makeup stories, real stories. My wife and I and my daughter and my mom went to uh, the Holy Land this year, which was an unbelievable experience. Reading the Bible and going to church and stuff is one thing. When I got a chance to see exactly where the Christ was born and died and everything that the story is in between, it became real. It became even more powerful. So now when I'm reading and I'm talking about God, I'm going, yeah, I was at Jerusalem. Oh, yeah, I was at Nazareth. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So when you have a clinic and you see God's miracles, you hold that baby that was sick, or you watch that man walk in now, and last week his sciatica was so bad he was crawling, and you go, looks like you're standing up and you're walking again. Yeah, yeah. That's why we all do what we do. That's why you do what you do, Billy. That's why I do what I do. It's because the people are the story, not me. Hey, right, right. So much. We give them, we give them hope. We give them faith. And like I said at the very beginning, you know, it's not about money to me. No. I don't... Uh, I don't, I, I'm, I'm comfortable. I'm not rich, but, but I'm comfortable. Sure. And like my wife said, you know, uh, we, you, you've got more, you know, kudos. And I said, I don't do kudos. I do because I want to see the miracles that God helps provide. I'm so thankful that on Fridays, I go to church every Friday and light some candles on, on the honor of the families I serve this week, because it's not me healing them. I'm just an instrument. Right. That's all I am. I'm the instrument right. that gets to witness. You got to be kidding me. That's why I'm always so excited because yeah, every day too. I got a new person. I'm, I'm going to, they don't know it, but I'm going to change their life. Yeah, I'm going to change yeah, and their the life. Thing, the question I always ask is that I don't know how someone could even actually think about retiring doing what we do. It's just so no. rewarding to see people's lives be affected on that level and see people that have been had so many health challenges just resurrect themselves to another level of health. And 
you know, there people are just so grateful to you too. And it's like, I, I don't really have a lot to do it. I'm just the, I remove the interference and help the body just live at a higher frequency in the body and God heals the body. That's it's that simple. Yeah. But you're I also, take, very I don't loud, take Billy. any credit. I don't take but, any blame either. Really? You're also loud. Oh yeah. And what I mean, I don't mean loud in a bad way. You're no, loud. No, no, I know. I mean, you're loud. You're not afraid to tell people the real truth. Right. You're not afraid to, you know, the health, the problem, I live by a, a sentence. There's a book called um, who moved my cheese. Okay. And it's just a little paperback book and it's about two mice and stuff that are they're 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 living in a little area and the cheese is all getting gone and there's no more cheese and so they're scared to death to go into that maze of life and they don't want to go out there but they know if they don't go out there they're going to die so they finally go out there and they run into all kinds of dead owner uh, dead corners that's kind of like medicine i'm sick right. i got right. lyme disease i went to see this doctor he didn't do anything for me i went to see that one that one didn't help me and we start giving up and and the mice are you're getting weaker and weaker but they kept going they kept having some some hope that stuff was there and all of a sudden they they found this they found this one door this one part of the maze it opened up and there's all this cheese right tons of cheese they can't wait to go back to the to the beginning where they came from and tell all their buddies but guess what happens? They go back. Guys, guess what? I found a whole bunch of cheese. I'm not going out there. What do you mean you're not going out there? You, you guys are going to die here. <laughs> yeah, but I'm not going out there. I don't know what's out there. And so now you don't go out there. Well, I'm out of here, man. I'm going back to where the cheese is at, and I'm going to eat as much as I want to eat for the rest of my life. And that's the sad part about what happens to us, too. We get so disappointed and so given up. We start giving up hope. And we start giving up our faith because we went to here. And, and, and why would you have an answer? I went to 20 doctors that are so smart and, then, and, and everything else. And they didn't help me. Who says that you're going to be able to help me? So there's these little pieces of cheese that have sayings on them. And one of the sayings says this. What would you do if you weren't afraid? What would you do if you weren't afraid? If you weren't afraid, when you walked by somebody and saw them in a wheelchair and it looked like a little kid, then maybe you'd walk up to those parents and say, what's wrong with your child? My name is Bill. I might be able to help them. And because I did that one day, this little girl right here, she's nine years old in this picture, okay? Her name is yep. Natasha. Right. What's that? Part of her brain missing. She has seizures every single day. They last for 20 to 25 minutes. She has silver palsy in her right hand and she's blind and deaf. And when I saw her in a place called CC's Pizza and there was nobody in the restaurant, it was kind of a great place because it was all you can eat pizza, kind of like Shakey's you guys have in California. And then it was like two o'clock. There was nobody else in the restaurant. And I loaded up like, like, Bellucci, you know, like Animal House, got me, got me some of this, got me some of that. And then I looked over and that little girl reached out to me with her eyes. And I said, Lord, I'll go over and talk to her. So I went over there, introduced myself to the family. I said, hi, my name is Bill Schindler. Is this your daughter? Yeah. What's wrong with her? And they told me her story. And I said, I think I might be able to help your daughter. I can't promise you anything, but I think I can help. And so I went, I told them to meet me at my clinic. They did at three o'clock. We put her and her mother in the chamber. The next day, I said, come back at 3 o'clock again. And they came back. I didn't realize how important that time was. 3 o'clock, Friday, right? What happens on Friday at Easter? 3 o'clock, that was the time they came to my clinic. When that happened and stuff, the mother came back. She sat in the chair and she started bawling. And I said, Why? She said, my daughter had a seizure. It's the only time, Billy, in 23 years and over 60,000 families I've treated that I doubted myself. I doubted myself because I wanted to help that little girl. And I just did damage to her. And that's when the mother said the seizure was only two minutes long. Oh. It was the shortest seizure she'd ever had. Wow. Then we came, they came back every day, five days a week. For a year and three months, I treated her at no cost. Then I had a, we had a, a, a fundraiser for him and got up in chamber, okay? But here's the great part of the story. In the first month, she took her first eight steps in life. She was told she would never walk. She opened up her right hand. She got complete circulation in her lower extremities. We know she's not blind or deaf because she, she would reach out to Dora the Explorer on a DVD player back at the time, and she would reach out to us. So she must have saw something. And as she heard my voice, she turned her head. 
So what do we do? We gave that family some hope, Billy. We gave the family some hope. And that's what, what, what you do. That's what I do. And that's what the rest of us do. God gave us that ability. And that's why I can do so many things like this. Hyperbarics in sports. Hyperbarics in COVID. We never shut down when COVID happened. No. I never shut the clinic down. It was quite the opposite. People needed us. The Chinese had done a clinical study on hyperbarics and COVID within the first month of COVID being released. It's an out of coincidence, okay? How about uh, inflammation? We just talked about that. How about addiction and recovery? Every rehab center in the, in the United States as a rehab center is missing the boat. Why? Because you're at the clinic all the time. You got to do something for yourself. You got to get out of that cheese box and go find the cheese, right? So the reality is until we take care of ourselves, how it doesn't matter. There, the addiction of drugs and alcohol has a direct effect on the human body itself, our liver, our brain, and everything else. So if we can turn around and also deal with some of the damage that we've done and get rid of the alcohol, that's why we use it for carbon monoxide poisoning, right? So right. get rid of that. You could go into the chamber completely drunk, come out an hour later completely sober. That's how quickly we get rid of the alcohol. We should be using them in our rehab centers. So those of you out there that are having troubles, you know, you're depressed because you want to stop these things, but you just, you, you just, you, you know, you got an addiction. You need to come. You need to get in a hyperbaric chamber. How about stem cells? Hyperbaric medicine stimulates stem cell activity. That's why we use in the hospital for burn victims, okay? Right. Uh, how about uh, traumatic brain injuries? And how about pre and post surgery, specifically plastic surgery? We want to use it before the surgery to clean the body out. And then on the backside, we want to use it to prevent, you know, infection and disease. Every plastic surgeon in Southern California should be using a hyperbaric chamber. They have much better success for their patients, especially the ones that have drinking issues and smoke, et cetera. Okay. What about Lyme disease? And how about dementia and Alzheimer's? How about neurological issues? It's backwards when I'm looking. That's why I have to pause. <laughs> what about strokes? Okay. What about anti-aging? You know, the big buzzword in the world right now is telomeres. Like this hey. magic word all of a sudden got invented. Telomeres, right? Those are the link thing on the chromosome, the link thing of the lines on the chromosomes. And what happens when we age, they get smaller and smaller. Well, they did a study in Tel Aviv in Israel a couple of years ago to prove it increases the telomere's length. What does that mean? Well, the anti-aging aspects is cool, but why I like it is because what happens if we could bring the body and the brain back earlier time, maybe we can help prevent, back to the prevention again, some of the issues like Alzheimer's, dementia, Parkinson's, et cetera, okay? Right. Cancer, autism, cerebral palsy, Diabetes, just to name a few. How do we get if some of those pamphlets, Bill? Oh, uh, man, I'll have to help you out there. I'll have to help you out, okay? Because inside one of these, you know, one of them has, look at here. We got, what is it? What the issues are? And how, has, how does hyperbaric turn around and reduce these issues, okay? All right. The last couple of things I just want to say real quick is this. You're breathing about 10, 15 times in a minute, okay? Every minute. Just to survive in this world. In an hour, you breathe about 700 times or so. In two hours, about 1,400. You go in Billy's hyperbaric chamber in one hour or so, it's not oxygen anymore. It's a dosage of medicine. Every breath that you take, you just took a dosage of medicine. And now that oxygen is being delivered to all parts of the human body at one time. You took 700 dosages. Don't you think you'd feel a little better, your aches and pains and neurological, if you took a tsunami of oxygen for the whole body to utilize? In two hours, that's 1,400 dosages, all right? What drug do they use for a burn victim at the hospitals in California? What drug do they use, Billy? I don't know. Guess what, Billy? They don't use they the drug. Don't. Right. They don't. What drug do they use for commercial scuba divers when they get the bends? They don't have They one. don't use a drug. Amazing. What, a, what drug do they use for carbon monoxide poisoning? They don't use a drug. Amazing how they don't use a drug. What drug do you use for a flesh-eating bacterial? They don't use a drug. Because the ultimate drug or supplement in the world is oxygen. 
and what it can do or what the lack of oxygen does to us. So you have everything to gain and nothing to lose. If you're out there listening to this podcast with Billy and I, and you've got MS, you've got a stroke, or you've got a family member with cancer or arthritis or Lyme disease, or a child that seems to be ADD or lacking the you know development delay, or you got somebody that all these, you got an athlete that just hurt his leg, you got all these, why would you not want to think about seeing Billy DeMoss or, or others else. across yeah. the country right. and come and see us and get your lives changed? And here's the best part, Billy. Somewhere today, somebody's going to be listening to this and they're going to start looking it up and they're going, why did I not know about this before? Yeah, why didn't? They say that about chiropractic all the time, let alone amazing. something like hyperbaric. It's amazing. Yeah. Yep. And the chiropractors know what we're talking about because they've been fighting this for years. Did right. you know chiropractor used to go to jail in the old days? Yeah, right? I know that. You, you, oh, crazy. I, I talked to some of the guys. Well, a lot of them are dead now because they were 100 years old by now. But back in that time, chiropractic was so challenging that you had to sneak into it. It's almost like religion in some countries. Right. You, can't, you couldn't do it. You know? So it's people like Billy DeMoss going back to that, those, those mice and the cheese. Billy's not afraid to say what he needs to say. No, Some I'm people don't want to hear it, and that's okay. That's but right. it's much better for you to have, you know, the truth, and then you make the decision of what's best for you. Let the right. proof be in the pudding. That's, that's right. why Cal Jam is awesome. I yeah. tell people about Cal Jam all the time. Where can you go? And go listen to some of the top speakers in the country and then listen to some music in between and watch Billy DeMoss rock it out. I don't know anywhere, man. Love you, Billy. I'm, you know what I'm going to do right now? I'm going to go take, I'm going to go nap at the nap 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 in in hyperbaric. Just kidding. Yeah, yeah. As I say, I'll take some bong reps of oxygen, come out higher than a kite, just on oxygen. <laughs> all right, love you, man. Thank you for all your energy. You got a lot of energy, oh, too, man. No, thank you. you. And I probably you could- know, yeah, thank you so much for giving me the opportunity. You know, uh, I real get quick to see God's witnesses. Too, I, many- I, I know a lot of doctors are going to probably want to, you know, think about adding hyperbaric to the practices. And you'd mentioned something to me before the show that you'll give them the same discount you give them at CalJam. No, oh, yeah, all doctors and stuff, all families, you don't even have to ask me. We give a 10% discount on all the chambers. But more importantly, you know, just look into hyperbarics. And see, you know, a lot of times what happens is somebody comes into my clinic because they had this issue and then they find out what we do and then they bring their mother who has cancer. And that that's where we become the vessels, Billy. OK, right. you know, it's like when you treat somebody with chiropractic work and then somebody else, you know, they says, well, my brother's been having this problem with his sciatica. Bring him to me. And then right. you change his life. OK, right. Right. that's what's awesome about this. So I'd like to end with this. Is that OK? A little yeah. prayer, a little yep. prayer for you. Little prayer for the families that are I, listening. We all need prayers and we need yeah. a lot of hugs and we need a lot of oxygen and a lot of nerve flow. All right. So this prayer is for healing. That's all this. It's a it's a healing prayer. Okay. And what I've done to the, the to the prayer that I have right here, I do the, my prayers every day. What uh, I change the words to say to them instead of me. The, the prayer is meant for me, but I change the words for the people. Lord, you invite all who are burning to come to you. Allow your healing hand to heal them. Touch their soul with your compassion for others. Touch their heart with your courage and infinite love for all. Touch their mind with your wisdom that their mouth may always proclaim your praise. Teach them to reach out to you in their need and help them lead others to you by example. Most loving heart of Jesus, bring them health and body and spirit that they may serve you with all their strength. Touch gently their life which you have created now and forever. Amen. Amen, my brother. Love you, Billy DeMoss. God bless you, my friend. Thanks for being on the show. Okay. We're going to touch some hearts and some souls and some lives with this podcast. And as I always say, rock and roll, my friend. All right. Have a good day. Always and in all ways. God bless.